Last week was our celebration of Catholic Schools Week. We've talked often about the blessings we are grateful for this year. And for me, being a part of the Catholic school community is chief among those blessings. Since coming to work at CM, I have strengthened my faith, found my purpose, and built relationships that have helped to guide me through many life experiences, both the positive and the more difficult. There's something unique about Catholic schools, particularly CM, that serves far more than the education found in classrooms and textbooks. In our mission, we talk about transforming boys' lives, but the secret is that it doesn't just end with the boys. Earlier this year, we heard from Father Boyle about his experience as a faculty member at Catholic Memorial and how it transformed his life. It certainly transformed mine, and there are many others in this faculty, staff, and larger CM community who could say the same, that they have never sat in a classroom here on Baker Street. Catholic schools have always served a greater purpose. On back to the days where Blessed Edmund Rice began his ministry serving the poor boys of Ireland, these places have always been a lighthouse on life's journey. For some of us, it happens as students, others as staff, still others as parents. This morning, we're going to hear from campus minister and theology faculty member, Mr. Will Healy. Mr. Healy comes to us originally from Needham, but his path to CM is not as direct as a location would have you believe. Let's welcome Mr. Healy as he shares his story. Some of you may know me. For those who do not, my name is Mr. Will Healy. I'm an eighth grade theology teacher and member of the campus ministry team. And if you had told me that that would be how I introduced myself to hundreds of people a few years ago, I would have laughed. You see, teaching, ministry, schools, all this, still very new to me. There are many people who had a remarkable teacher or educational experience in their past that inspired them to pursue a career providing that same spark to future generations. While I have had some extraordinary teachers in my life, I can't point to a moment, class, lesson, or year of school that provided me such a clear vision for my future. In fact, I envy friends and family who seem so sure of their past and what they wanted in life, whether it was in education or elsewhere. But in retrospect, I'm incredibly grateful for the winding road that has led me to this moment. A road so full of coincidences and seemingly random happenings that my mother would say there was something much grander and more powerful than chance at play while I tried to find my way. Unlike many of the faculty and administration here at CM, my path did not begin at nearby Boston College. But at the University of Massachusetts at Amherst and the Eisenberg School of Management, I had decided that a finance major and career in business was a path for me. During my years at UMass, I progressed through the coursework and internship experiences. I learned a great deal. I worked for and with brilliant people in the classroom and the office. All of these experiences, however, did not provide me the spark of joy or of passion that I was looking for. Nothing gave me that just right feeling that I was exactly where I was supposed to be. What did provide me that spark in college was acting and singing in plays and musicals with the UMass Theater Guild and the Department of Theater. So after four years of business classes, a part-time job screening financial transactions, and a summer at a small wealth management firm, I decided after graduation to move to New York City and to give a new one new Broadway, a shot. The New York life brought with a new set of challenges. To pay the bills, I worked as a server at a restaurant in Tribeca. There were moments of genuine joy 
in the restaurant and in my brief acting career that consists of classes, showcases, and a couple very small, what I like to call off, 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 off Broadway productions. Once again, I was able to work with wonderful people from directors and fellow actors, restaurant managers, servers, and busters. And once again, I learned a great deal about both acting and the restaurant industry. And there was a real thrill in performing that I had not known in Finance 301 or in spreadsheets. Thinking on my feet, listening and reacting to scene partners, and holding the attention of the room were tasks that challenged and excited me. Still, there was something missing. I was unsure if I was using my gifts for the benefit of others and for the betterment of society. Not to mention the logistical challenges of that life that began to weigh on me. The hectic and unpredictable schedule, late hours of restaurant work, and mornings of catching up on sleep made me question if I was in the right place and did not leave me enough time or energy for what matters most my faith, and my family. So once again, my path took a sharp turn, this time away from restaurants and acting, and back toward the unknown. After four months of unemployment, I was desperate for work. And at the suggestion of friends and family, I sent the email to about a dozen private schools in New York, looking for some kind of work. I'm not sure really what I expected, but I was hoping maybe someone might offer me a day of subbing here or there. I did not hear back from most of the schools. A couple said, uh, thank you, we don't need anyone right now. And then a very curious thing happened. I received a phone call from the assistant principal at a Catholic school in Brooklyn called Bishop Lawson. It seems the school had an English teacher who would be out the first two weeks after Christmas break and substitute plants and fall and They would need me in the following day. Somehow, some way, in one of my darkest hours, after years of trying to find the just right place for me and months of applying and interview and applying and interviewing again, an opportunity arose to spend two weeks as a classroom teacher. I'll remind you, my mother has taught me that moments like this are not coincidence. They are part of a much larger plan. Still, I was scared. With my lack of experience, training, or education, how was I going to enter this world I knew so very little about and avoid catastrophic failure? After receiving some advice and support from friends and family, I said yes to the call and dove headfirst into the world of happiness. I was immediately struck by the energy in the building. It was full of life and laughter. And dedicated and welcoming faculty and amazing young men and women. Their community said the live Jesus in our hearts forever prayer. And the drama club was putting on suitable the musical, the final show I had performed in at UMass. Looking back, I believe these are some of the many markers along the trail that indicated I was heading in the right direction. I taught, attended assemblies, and even joined rehearsal in place of the teacher I was covering, because of course, he was the director of the musical. After my two weeks were up, I gathered what small items I had at school, ventured out once again into the unknown, but this time with a renewed sense of hope that there was a chance that I had found the world that I belonged to. I remained in New York for a short time after my experience at Bishop Law, living with college friends and working an operations job at NYU's campus center to pay the bills. It took me a while to confidently and definitively say yes to this crazy new notion of working in schools. But once I did, I made the decision to return home to Boston to see how I would fare on this new path. In April of 2019, I reached out to Dr. Holden to see if he might have any time for a short informational meeting 
to learn more about the world of Catholic education. And I was incredibly fortunate to spend several hour morning at CM just a week later, where I met with Dr. Bullard, Mr. Durazo, and an old family friend and fellow media resident named Mr. Durbin. Once again, the energy of the school hit me like a ton of bricks. Once again, I experienced the laughter and light and love in the halls that come from a student body who genuinely wanted to be. And the warmth and the welcome of faculty and administrators who cared deeply about what they did and who they served. I was focused. Although CM did not have any openings for me at that time, I left that morning encouraged, and now more sure than ever that Catholic schools were for me. I then accepted a job as a teaching assistant at my alma mater, Peter High School. In August of 2019, just a couple weeks before the school year was to begin, and after attending four days of orientation in Nina, I received a call from Dr. Gordon. It turns out there had been some reshuffling within the faculty at Dr. Bowen asked me if I was interested in teaching theology and serving as a campus minister. I hope I'm not getting too repetitive here, gentlemen, but opportunities and moments like this are more than coincidence, and they are more than chance. Once again, I was receiving a call from God down in New York. And once again, I was scared. I had to decide whether to end my very short time in Edenheim, a place I was comfortable with, a place that I was familiar with, to begin what was more than just a trial run or a job assisting someone else. This felt bigger. It was more unknown. And it was sudden. I had only had my classroom for two weeks, and now I was being asked to teach an entire year. After praying and talking it over with my family, I put my faith in God and decided once again to say yes to God's call. I have now been at CM for 18 months and I'm grateful for every day. The same energy and joy I felt during my visit almost two years ago is alive and well in the talks. I have been fortunate to meet and work with extraordinary young men who are so clearly the leaders of today and tomorrow. And I have met dozens of dedicated, selfless, and brilliant teachers and administrators. I know that CM is a special and unique place, but in my very limited experience, this is what Catholic schools are. A place where character and service and integrity are taught alongside math and English and history. A place where teachers and students alike leave campus every day, inspired and hopeful for a better world. A place where educating is not only about the conjugation of irregular verbs or the molecular formula of blueprints, but about loving each other and encouraging students to discover their unique gifts and their infinite potential and value as a child of God. I took a very unusual path to arrive here today. My Catholic faith has always been a large part of my life, but I have not attended a Catholic school since I was 11 years old. My highest degree earned is a bachelor's of business administration and finance. And though the pursuit of a life on Wall Street or on Broadway is worthwhile and full of wonderful moments, neither place was where I was meant to land. I do not regret the path that I have traveled. For every moment of my life has led me to be standing in front of you this morning. If I could offer you, gentlemen, one piece of advice, it would be this. Say yes to the call, whenever and wherever you receive it. Last spring, as I was wrapping up the junior year of theology curriculum, discipleship and vocation, and my first year of teaching, I was personally finishing a book called The Seven Story Mountain. By Thomas Merton. It is a spiritual autobiography, but above all, it's the story of a man trying to respond to God's call and to find his path. It was not intentional on my part, 
that simultaneously reading a book about vocation, encouraging young men to consider their own calling and path while trying to figure out my own. It was only at the suggestion of a dear friend that I had picked it up in the first place. It may not be appropriate to compare myself to such a person, but I could see myself if ever so faintly in Merton's story. Neither he nor I had a straight line, clear cut path to where we had up. There were detours and stop signs, and sometimes it seemed we had not remained on the road at all. A young Thomas Martin would never have imagined himself becoming a Travis monk, as I would never have imagined myself becoming a theology teacher and hence minister. A journey like this, a journey of twists and turns and unpredictability, can be filled with anxiety and perhaps fear. But there is also great freedom. We are not now nor ever locked into any one trap or one path. In fact, for most of us, our lives will not go exactly as we have planned. God may have plans for us that we have not considered. And my challenge to all of us in this community is to be open to change, be open to new experiences, and to say yes to God's call if you hear it. Although it was scary and not what I had planned for myself for the majority of my adolescent and adult life, I have tried to say yes to what I believe is God's call for me. And I now feel like I have found the world to which I belong, where I can teach the unconditional love of God and our obligation to serve others, where I can work in ministry, theater, and athletics, where I can be myself, where I can play a role in helping a wonderful institution live out their mission, and where I can do my part however small it may be, in transforming the lives of some of the finest young men in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I am so grateful for the opportunity to come here every day. So grateful for the kindness, support, and guidance that exists in every corner of our school. And so grateful for wonderful memories like the Breast Cancer Walk, Acadia, Night nice Days, and then there were none, little shop reporters, watching basketball and football games, Kairos, and most recently, Brothers United Against Homelessness. I will try every day to remind myself how blessed I am to be here with you, and I hope to make many more memories in the years to come. Thank you for your attention, and thank you above all for helping me to say yes to God's call every day I walk in this building. Thank you.